everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It is Classic Friday again. This is when we look at a G.I. Joe classified series figure. I hope you have enjoyed all the Cobra content this month. There is still more to come. Check hcc788.com for a full calendar of presenters. This time we are looking at the Target exclusive special mission Cobra Island Firefly. Let's look at the packaging. We have the window pane that shows the figure and the accessories. We have the special mission Cobra Island logo and the G.I. Joe classified series logo this is firefly we have some artwork of firefly here and on the side and the artwork is fine i like it just as standalone artwork but i have a couple problems with it as package art first of all the artwork on the front is backlit by this kind of explosion here in the background so the character is sort of in shadow so you see more of a silhouette than you see of the character and on the side the background is black so there's not very much contrast but between the black of the background and the shadowy character of Firefly. So on neither the side or the front do you see very much of the character. This is number 21 in the classified series. On the back we have the generic Cobra Island artwork that we've seen on other figures in this series. And on this side we have these symbols which represent his specialties. This one is a Rorschach test. I see a butterfly. This means he is against rectangles. This is a beetle and this one is a cute robot. Let's take Firefly out of the packaging and take a look at the figure. Here is Firefly out of the packaging, and this figure is obviously inspired by Firefly version 1 from 1984. I say inspired by, there are some elements that are copied over, as you can tell, at a glance, but there are also some important differences, and we need to talk about them. There were some complaints about this figure when it came out, and at the time, I really didn't see what the problem was, but now I think I get it. Let's look at Firefly's accessories, and he comes with quite a few of them. Let's start with these goggles. These goggles are made of a black, soft, flexible plastic with red lenses and a little antenna. And I like these. This is a nice addition for Firefly. Uh, the band is flexible enough that you can put the goggles on his head or slip them down over his eyes. The rest of his accessories attach to the backpack, and I like that. That's a good thing. I like to have storage for weapons. Let's start with his firearm. Uh, it pegs onto the side of the backpack. There is a peg on the weapon that connects to a hole in the side of the backpack. This is an I don't know what. A machine pistol, maybe? It is in black plastic. It has a lot of nice detail, but it also has an unsightly peg on one side for pegging on that backpack. Now, I do like the idea of pegging the weapons on the backpack, but doing it this way leaves this really ugly peg on them. This machine pistol, whatever, will fit in the figure's hand with some effort, so he can hold that and fire it. This is not an update of the original submachine gun for version 1 of Firefly, and that's unfortunate. That's a missed opportunity. The next accessory is this drone, which pegs onto the backpack at the top. It just has a couple feet that slide into these slots. There is a controller for this drone. We will look at that moment this is obviously a more modern accessory than the vintage figure would have come with. It is in black plastic. It has two shrouded propellers. It has two feet for landing or pegging onto the backpack. It has an evil red robot eye. There is some articulation on these legs. They can fold up or fold back. This accessory actually makes some sense to me. Firefly is a saboteur, and he could use this drone to scout out his targets. An accessory that goes with the drone is what I assume is the drone controller, which stores inside the backpack. There's a cavity, and you can just pull that out. This accessory is just straight black plastic with no paint applications. I assume this is supposed to be the screen. I am happy that it has a place to store in the backpack. That controller can fit in Firefly. Firefly's hand with some effort so he can hold the controller and control the drone. There is one more accessory pegged on the backpack and that is this bomb. It pegs onto the bottom and it only goes one way. It is keyed so you have to peg it on with the wire part facing his left side. This bomb accessory is important to Firefly's job as a saboteur and there are some nice details on it. The bomb consists of some red road flares taped together with some black electrical tape and 
just got some wires connected to an old pocket watch. Finally, we get to the backpack itself. The backpack is in black plastic. It has the slots and the hole and the peg for the other accessories and the cavity on the other side and a peg for pegging it onto the figure. The hole in the back is where that peg goes and it fits reasonably well. The backpack has some decent details. I see a zipper and there's a texture pattern on it and there are some tools and this is important for Firefly. It looks like he has a wrench and some screwdrivers and some pliers and nippers and maybe a knife right there and these are tools he would no doubt use for his explosives. As nice as this backpack is, it is not an update of the version 1 backpack. The version 1 backpack also had some explosives sculpted on and it had an opening compartment with a cavity that had some tools. This vintage Firefly backpack is iconic and very closely associated with Firefly. This new one, as nice as it is, and it does hold all of the accessories, the vintage backpack does not do that. This just isn't the same. None of the classified accessories are really analogous to the famous walkie-talkie with version 1 Firefly, unless you account this thing, which I don't. Let's take a look at the articulation on Firefly. He has the standard G.I. Joe classified articulation, which is pretty good, but you can't take advantage of all of the articulation points. We will talk about why. He has good range of motion at the head, despite this ring collar, so you can move his head around quite a bit, although his chin bumps that collar a little bit. His arms can move up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. The right arm is not hindered too much by this armor piece on the shoulder on the upward swing part, but it is hindered on the swivel. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders. They move a little bit, somewhat hindered by this vest. He has swivel at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has swivels at both wrists, and the left wrist appears to have an up and down hinge, but mine does not move very much. The right wrist has a side to side hinge. He has a large hinge at the rib cage, which is totally obstructed by this vest piece. So you can't really get too much of an ab crunch, but he can still swivel at the waist so you can move him at the waist and he has a good leg split you gotta pop his legs back into their sockets he can move his legs forward about so far back not very much he has a twist at the thigh he has double jointed knees he has a twist at the boot cut and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Firefly, and here's where we run into a little bit of trouble. His head looks pretty good. He has a gray mask with some plain gray panels and two-tone gray camouflage on the sides. That looks pretty good and is somewhat reminiscent of the version one figure. He has some scarring around his eyes, and it looks like he has a dead eye. This head is similar, but not the same as the previous special missions Cobra Island release, Beachhead. He has this very large vest piece that totally covers his torso, and this is where we start to run into some problems. Uh, it is in gray. It has a flap on the front and another flap on the back with some scarring. He has some pits and dents all over the armor plate all over this vest. He has some black details including some black armor on the neck. He has some grenades on his left shoulder. He has this armor piece over the right shoulder and he has a red cobra emblem on the center of that shoulder armor. He has some black pouches in the front and a silver belt buckle. This is a very bulky piece. This is the kind of armor someone would wear when they are defusing explosives. Firefly is a saboteur. He plants explosives. He can't have anything this bulky on him. He has to infiltrate places and plant explosives and destroy machinery. That's his job, and this equipment is not for that job. Tripwire might wear something like this, but it does not fit the character of Firefly, and it gets in the way of what might otherwise have been a really good figure. His arms feature long gray sleeves with a texture pattern and a two-tone camouflage pattern. He also has some gray panels on the sleeves and he has pouches on the shoulders 
and he has dark gray gloves. Although the head is different from Beachhead's, the arms are actually the same. He is reusing Beachhead's arms and hands. I assume he's reusing the torso as well, but the vest completely covers it. His waist piece is covered in the front and the back with these flaps. He also has gray legs with a two-tone camouflage pattern. I do like that very much. He has light gray knee pads and dark gray boots. You may recognize these legs because we've seen these legs before on Snake Eyes from the first wave of classified figures. He uses the same legs and the same knee pads. Different boots though. This Firefly figure has some nice details including some scarring on the face and some texture in the mask and some battle damage on the vest and the two-tone camouflage pattern. I think those things look good but fundamentally this figure misses the point of Firefly. Look they got the gray camouflage right. That is an important characteristic of Firefly and that looks good but Firefly is a saboteur. He infiltrates enemy bases and plants explosives and causes havoc, and this figure cannot do that. Firefly could not wear anything this restrictive to do that job. There is an alternative to this Firefly figure, one that some collectors have been using for quite some time. It is the Fortnite 6-inch Havoc figure, a figure that is so inspired by Firefly that it basically is Firefly. With this one, you have the balaclava and the gray camouflage and some black details and it looks like an updated Firefly figure but I do have an unpopular opinion about it. For me this is not an adequate substitute for a classified Firefly. This figure looks fine but if you're accustomed to the quality of a G.I. Joe classified figure you may be disappointed with this alternative Firefly figure in hand. To me it just doesn't feel like it has the same quality. Better days are in the future because Hasbro has announced they're doing another Another Firefly figure that will be more close to the Vintage One figure, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that. This figure has some really nice details, some details that I hope are copied over to the new Firefly figure, but I now understand why people had such a problem with this figure. If you know anything about Firefly, this just doesn't work as Firefly. That was my review of the G.I. Joe Classified Series Firefly. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you've been enjoying all of the Cobra Convergence 6 content this month. Make sure you check out hcc788.com for a full calendar of presenters. It has been my pleasure working with so many great G.I. Joe fans creating amazing content for this month dedicated to Cobra. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. If you'd like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. I will be back soon to wrap up Cobra Convergence 6. I will see you then, and until then, remember only Cobra is Cobra.